I'm going to Paris just by myself. I'm leaving in like three hours. Am I nervous? Yes, but it'll be fine, it'll be fine. After I went traveling with my friend earlier this summer, I realized how much more confident I got and how much it helped me with my social anxiety. But when I got back home, I realized that that new confidence was slowly disappearing again. And I didn't want to go back to the old version of myself, like the version that just stays at home all the time and hides in her room. So on the 3rd of August, at about 10 or 11 p.m., I made the spontaneous decision to go completely out of my comfort zone by going to Paris alone. I booked my train tickets that night and the next morning I booked the hostel bed with my mom and it was a mixed dorm room for 10 people so that was also really out of my comfort zone. And if I wouldn't have traveled with a friend before and stayed at hostels with that friend before, then I would have never had the courage to do that alone. But if you do something more often it gets easier and the more you stay at hostels the more comfortable you get with people sharing a room with you and honestly hostels used to scare me a lot because i always thought i'd be kind of forced to talk to people or that i would feel uncomfortable with so many people around me but it's actually not like that at all at least from my experience because everyone is just doing their own thing like sometimes there will be people talking to you or uh, people asking you if you want to hang out and I mean that can be fun because sometimes you actually want to meet new people But if you don't want to meet new people or you just kind of feel like staying on your own and Exploring the place where you are alone then that's fine as well And no one will force you to do something with them or talk to them For example when I went on the trip with my friend we were like open to meet new people and hang out with new people But when I went to Paris I felt more like doing stuff alone and being alone and kind of also forcing myself to be alone to get out of my comfort zone and just have fun by myself not needing anyone else there if that makes sense so that's exactly what i did so when i arrived in paris i first settled into my room and then got ready to walk around and visit a park that i found on google maps which was 15 minutes away from my hostel so I went there and it was so beautiful and I just felt really comfortable. I bought a pizza and sat next to a river and I remember feeling so much joy and happiness and also hope. Because a few months ago or even weeks, I would have never thought I could ever travel alone because of all the fears that were holding me back. But in that moment, I kind of realized that I overcame all of those fears or I mean, the fears were still there, but I did it anyways. And that's what I think I was most proud of and most happy about. Also something I wanted to mention real quick is my skin because I get a lot of comments and compliments especially on Instagram and I just wanted to let you know that my skin is not perfect at all especially at the moment like even the pictures that I post on my Instagram they're not edited but I always make sure that the light is good and that it makes my skin look smooth even though it's not and the same in my YouTube videos so just so you know my skin isn't flawless and even though it looks like it it's not and please don't make yourself feel bad because people on the internet seem so Flawless, they're not. <laughs> After I got ready for bed, I started writing a little bit about my day into my new journal and then I went to sleep. Honestly, I'm not a morning person. I always wake up early, but then I stay in bed for like another hour and my face always feels swollen in the morning and my eyes look really puffy. But obviously, I'm not gonna stay in bed all the morning when I'm in Paris. So I got up, took a shower and then got ready. I was always the first person in my room to wake up and when I got ready in the morning, there was always this one person's alarm that would just ring for like 10 minutes.
and like he would just not wake up and it didn't bother me because obviously I was already awake but the other people in the room were really annoyed. After I left the hostel I walked to the metro station and took a train to see the Eiffel Tower and I haven't had breakfast at that point so I was looking for a bakery which surprisingly took longer than expected. I went to a bakery first but there were already people in there and, and I got kind of anxious because I couldn't choose what I wanted to eat so I left and then I went to another bakery but that one was closed I walked around for a while and tried to find a bakery and then finally I found one and I bought something to eat. And then I walked to the Eiffel Tower to sit on a bench and have breakfast. And while I was sitting on the bench, I called my grandma because I've been to Paris before with her four years ago, with her and my sister. And she was really excited about me going there alone. And something that she told me that meant a lot was that she was really proud of me for going alone and she also said I don't know if your mom told you this but she's very proud of you and that also meant a lot and just having that support of my family was a really good feeling because they know how hard it is for me to do things alone because of my social anxiety and I also think my mom was that proud of me because she started to really worry about my future because of my social anxiety and because I wasn't able to do things alone and me going to Paris alone was such a big step and such a big improvement and it not only gave me hope for the future but probably also her and obviously it always feels good to hear that someone's proud of you especially if you don't hear it often After I went shopping, I found this really beautiful park. It was not a big park, but it was just really pretty. And there were a lot of flowers and trees. And I decided to sit down for a while to journal. I spent more time in that park than I expected. It was just such a nice atmosphere and it was also like a nice place to just relax because it was a big contrast to the rest of Paris because everywhere else it's pretty busy or loud but in that park it was quiet and really peaceful. I forgot my headphones in the park, but luckily they were still there. God, that was stressful. I went back to the hostel to charge my phone and to get some rest because walking around all day is so exhausting. So I just laid down for a while and then I got dressed. And then I went to Lidl to buy some things for a picnic, but there were so many people in there and also I didn't really find much. So I only bought two things and then I went to the park. One thing I want to try tomorrow is uh, going to a restaurant or a cafe alone because that's something I'm a little bit scared of. I don't know why, but going somewhere alone, especially restaurant or to somewhere to eat is kind of weird or it isn't but it feels weird but i want to try this tomorrow i accidentally filmed the last clip in slow motion so i'm doing it again um what i was saying was that something else that's really weird or feels 
weird is talking to the camera in front of other people because I feel like everyone's watching me. The older they are, and even if they are, it doesn't matter. Mm, but it makes me feel a little uncomfortable, but I'm getting better at talking in front of the camera in public. Something I thought about a lot during my Paris trip was how I start to care less about what other people think about me or how other people see me, even though that's still a pretty big thing for me and it makes me insecure thinking about it. But at the same time, I'm overcoming those insecurities by doing things like filming in public or doing things alone. It gives me so much confidence and helps me overcoming those insecurities a lot. That's why I don't worry about the things that I don't see, yeah. These days I don't worry about money. Something I really like about traveling alone is that you can make all decisions for yourself and you don't have to ask someone else if they want to do that too or how you want to spend the day because it's just yourself so you can make all the decisions for yourself. Although I also really like traveling with friends because then you can share those new experiences together. And also if you're traveling with someone else, you have someone that can take pictures of you because I didn't have someone to take pictures of me in Paris. So most of the time I just tried taking pictures of myself, which didn't really work out. But at the same time, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing if you don't have someone that can take pictures of you. Because often when I'm somewhere I want to take pictures at, I don't really enjoy being there or enjoy looking at things because I'm too focused on taking pictures and taking a good picture for Instagram and while I was in Paris and I didn't have someone who could take pictures of me, I realized I enjoyed just being in the moment way more because I wasn't thinking about posting something on Instagram or how this would look like in a picture or how I look like in a picture and I think that was good because it made me appreciate being there more. I wanted to go to the museum later, but there was such a long line in front of the museum and I know I could have ordered a ticket before online, but it was Sunday so I thought I could get into the museum for free, but that was probably what everyone else was thinking too. So I decided not to go because I've been there before, so it's not like I haven't seen it yet. So I just went to the next park. And also I got really hungry and like I said, I wanted to try to go to a cafe or to a restaurant, but honestly, every cafe I went to was already full. Like there were people waiting in lines in front of it to get inside. So I was walking around for probably an hour to find somewhere to eat. And I ended up just finding a place where there were no seats left, but I could just order something for takeaway, so I did that.
After walking around for a while, I wanted to get something to eat and I wanted to get sushi, but all the sushi places I went to were already closed, but after a while I finally found a place and then I wanted to go eat at a park, but the park was already closed and it was starting to get dark outside, so I decided to go back to the hostel. On my last day I woke up early and I started journaling and I had to leave my hostel room by 10 but I wanted to leave my luggage at the hostel so I did that first. Then I bought some water and went to the one place I really wanted to see before I left. This building is honestly just so beautiful and I've been here before with my grandma, but I wanted to see it again because it's just so beautiful. And also there is a rooftop terrace, so that's also another reason why I wanted to see it. Before I went back to the hostel I got something to eat and I also bought a few souvenirs and then I went back to the hostel to get my luggage and then I went to the train station to get on my train back to Germany. So this was my Paris vlog, I hope you enjoyed watching and if you want me to do a separate video about solo traveling or just traveling with social anxiety then leave a comment and I hope to see you in my next video, bye!